So many people said to me, a woman can't run and win. And that got me thinking, wait a minute. (laughs) I'm a woman, and I know I can run, and I think I can win. When do you think the first female was elected to serve as mayor here in Rhode Island? About 1930. 70s. 1978. 1940s? Uh, 46, 1946. So, Rhode Island. I don't know if any woman's ever been mayor here. Was it not until... 1980? I'm going to say about the 1970s. 1992. No way. 1992? Oh, that's the year that I was born. Wow. wow. Really? Who? Why Who was this and where? I'm Catherine O'Hare. I was elected mayor of West Warwick, Rhode Island in 1992 the first woman to be elected mayor in the state of Rhode Island. Democratic legislators came to me in the state house. I was working for the governor, and they said, we think you should run for mayor. And my response to them was, aren't there any men who want to be mayor in the town of West Warwick? Later, I realized I was the sacrificial lamb. They knew no one could beat the incumbent mayor, who was a favored son, had been in government for years. Election night came. I lost the election, but only by a few votes. And my campaign group was ecstatic. It was like we won, because no one could believe that it was so close. So I stood up on a table, and people were cheering, and I said, I'm announcing tonight that I'm a candidate for mayor in the year 1992. I will run for mayor and I will win. 1992 seems like fairly recent history to have a woman, the first woman elected as mayor in the Ocean State. But think about it, here we are in 2014 and Rhode Islanders just recently elected the third female mayor in the state. So while we've made progress, there's still work to be done. She's going to be an attorney general, Arlene Violet. But every time a woman runs for office, every time a woman is elected, she's opening that door a little wider. People like Catherine O'Hare and Susan Menard were really groundbreaking politicians, particularly since, in this case, they were mayors. I'm 54 years old. Everyone wants to know how old you are, especially if you're a woman. Um, I'm not an actual blonde. I have my hair colored every four weeks. It's asked of me all the time. Um, I've been married more than once and I'm divorced. Do I date? Yes, I do. Do I still have sex? Yes, I do. Uh, I'm a size 10. I weigh 145 pounds. Um, I do have an occasional drink. I've been stopped for speeding on a few occasions. I swear like a truck driver and I spend way too much money on clothes. It may sound bizarre, but these are all questions as a woman in office that I have been asked over the past 22 years. And if you can't answer them, don't run. Between the both of them, we owe them a great debt. It wasn't like they were in the legislature. It wasn't like they were on the town council. They were actually running the show, and by the way, running the show very well. My main supporters were not political people. My main supporters were people in the community, teachers, librarians, Um, knocking on doors and people were so amazed that a woman would run for mayor that, hey, I'll help you. Come on, on my campaign, it'll be fun. We got a nice group of people together. I believe it was mostly women who really banded together and just made it happen. At YWCA Rhode Island, we train women from all backgrounds for positions in public life. We equip women to become advocates, candidates, and campaign activists. When we ask you to join us for a few laps, we mean rocking babies. When we ask you to lift weights, we mean to lighten the load of someone in need. When we say we can prepare you for the race, we mean running for office, getting involved in the political process, or advocating for a cause. We move closer to our mission when women themselves sit in the halls of power 
and participate in the decisions that shape our future. Women are 52% of the population of the state of Rhode Island and despite that fact we're only 27% of the General Assembly. We need for women to put their experiences and their education and their ideas and their resources and their values out there and, and, and lead and not be afraid to lead but to really step into that arena. And it was just a wonderful, wonderful moment in my life. It's hard to describe that moment when you know, you see the ballots coming in and the votes coming in and the numbers, and then they say, you've got it. You won. And you look, and I was surrounded by my daughters, my mother, my mother-in-law, my sisters-in-law, and it's just such a wonderful feeling to have them all surrounding me and all really sharing in the joy of that achievement because it wasn't mine alone. It was all of our achievements.